KGMB Studios in Honolulu, Hawaii. This is KGMB News Nightcast. This is a tragic and twisted love story on Valentine's Day. In circuit court today, the man accused of murdering five people and trying to kill three more, including the woman he loves. She is his wife and alleged shooting victim, and she was here too, trying to help him get released from prison. This is a story that at times seems reminiscent of the old childhood sing-song game. He loves her, he loves her not, he loves her, she loves him, she loves him not, she loves him. Good evening and welcome to the Nightcast on this Aloha Friday, Valentine's Day. I'm Leslie Wilcox. Orlando Ganahl Sr. heard his wife testify on his behalf today. Her parents are among the five people he's accused of murdering on a rampage on Oahu last August. He's also charged with shooting and injuring their son. We have two reports now, beginning with Dave Carlin at Circuit Court. The tragic love story that links accused murderer and arsonist Orlando Ganahl Sr. and his wife Mabel was on display in Circuit Court. He wants out of prison with a supervised release and a lower bail. His wife Mabel Ganahl is all for it. Call her romantic or call her crazy. That is because less than half a year ago she was witness to a killing and arson spree that her estranged husband allegedly performed to get back at her for seeing another man. I got shot. My parents got shot. And my son. Did you see the person that came into your parents' house and shot you? No. Wait a minute. Mabel Ganahl is singing a new tune. What she does not seem to remember on this witness stand is what she said to an investigator while she was in the hospital last year. Back then, she knew the gunman, and she knew him very well. She said she saw her husband, Orlando Ganahl Sr., standing there with the pistol in his hand. This is at page 90. She described it as a silver-colored pistol. She said that he shot her. Why is Mabel changing her story? Judge Marie Milks could not concern herself with that right now. She ruled that all the flip-flopping loyalties and the changing stories are part of what makes it necessary to keep Orlando Ganahl locked up without bail. Witness safety is a concern. Mabel could lead Orlando to one key player in this case. His name is David Touchette. He was the third element of the love triangle that allegedly sent Orlando into such a jealous rage that led to death and arson from Waipahu to Kailua. Mabel admits that she continues to speak by phone to Touchette, who lives on the mainland, without Orlando's knowledge. So the sticky situation that may have prompted all the violence seems to be alive on this Valentine's Day, which gives the court an extra reason to keep Ganahl as far removed from it as possible. Dave Carlin, KGMB News, Nightcast. Mabel Ganahl says some things have really changed since that black night in August, mainly that she has abandoned plans to divorce her husband, that they've reconciled, and she's become a regular visitor at the prison. Another thing that has really changed, as you heard in that report, is her version of what happened that night. Mabel Ganell now says she made a mistake when she said her husband shot her. And that's what she told KGMB's Sandra Segisi in this exclusive interview. Valentine's Day, he always gave me a good surprise. My birthday, Christmas, he was a good husband. I miss him because I can depend on him. Anything I want, it's always there because he works hard for me. He works hard for me. Mabel Ganahl says her husband Orlando showered her with expensive gifts over the years. From $14,000 worth of diamond jewelry to a beaming BMW, she had it all. But family members say all that changed when an extramarital affair cost her her parents' life. Mabel's brother says he believes Orlando Ganahl murdered his parents in cold blood. He can't forget that, and he can't understand why his sister changed her testimony today. It's all their fault. Who's fault? My sister, my, the boyfriend, David, and him. Orlando, you know. Orlando killed, but I don't know why she's lying. <laughs> I don't know why. Mabel Ganahl maintains her husband was not the gunman and that David Duchette isn't her boyfriend, but she does admit she was shot in the neck and her son in the head. She also says she lost the man who loved her with a passion. At the time before this happened, he came to my parents' house and he was talking to me like three hours. He begs me to come home. He'll do anything for me to make me come home. And I was confused then at that moment. 
Ganal blames herself for the death of her parents, Aradini and Santiago de la Cruz. Now that they're gone, my parents is gone, and he's gone too. I have nobody to turn to. I come home, and I think about them. I just miss them. And my family hate me because of what happened. They blaming me of what happened. They don't blame Orlando, but they blaming me. Then I look around in the house, I look what we did, and I think about Orlando. And I said to myself, what happened to our plan? What happened? They're gone. In Waipahu, Sandra Sigisi, KGMB News Nightcast. And now an exclusive hospital bedside interview with prison stabbing victim Eric Schrader. He's 38 years old and thought he might not see 39 when fellow inmates at Halava Prison attacked him Monday. He believes that prison guards goaded inmates into that violence. He says guards blamed him for pressing for an unpopular anti-smoking policy at the prison. Schrader also says two guards watched him being stabbed repeatedly without intervening. He spoke to his attorney, Miles Briner, at Queens Medical Center today. KGMB News provided the camera. Yeah, I, I think there was agitation in the way they did it. I think by telling the inmates that the cigarettes were taken away because of me, I think that agitated uh, their reactions to me. Uh, Eric, last night uh, you watched the news, correct? Correct. Did you see Mr. Sumner's statement uh, on television? Correct. Would you care to respond to that? Well, his statement that I was vacillating on protective custody is, is just incorrect. Why do you think it's incorrect? Well, I've, I've written him. I've put in numerous grievances. I've spoken to the Deputy Attorney General. I've spoken to a representative of the Internal Affairs Unit all within the last month and a half. State Prison's Chief George Sumner still says Schrader never asked for protective custody. Was Jeffrey Dahmer in control or insane when he killed and dismembered 15 young men in Milwaukee? That's a question jurors in his sanity trial are trying to answer tonight. The jury got the case today and went back to their hotel to deliberate. The decision will determine whether Dahmer goes to jail or a mental institution or both. Locally, there's been a lawsuit filed by the families of two passengers who disappeared and presumably died aboard a small private airplane last month. Nobody who left on that trip ever returned, not the four passengers nor pilot James Mays. The plane had left Honolulu International Airport and was en route to Molokai on January 14th when it vanished from radar somewhere past Cocoa Head. The families of two of the passengers, Mark Holman and Jim Carvero, are suing the estate of Mays and could receive damages from the insurance company. The court must decide if Mays followed correct safety procedures. The weather was such, it was a, it was a very bad weather day and uh, uh, he should not have been out flying since it was not what, what is known as visual flight rule conditions. It's still too early for court dates to be scheduled for these lawsuits. La uh, rather, a plane came down for a crash landing at Lanai Airport this morning. It was a Polynesian Airways freight plane that hauls mail and other supplies to Lanai and Molokai. No official determination has been made on what caused this to happen. It went about as well as a crash landing could go, no fire, and the pilot, who was the only person aboard, was not hurt. Lanai Airport had to be closed for a couple of hours, though. We have much more ahead for you on this edition of the KGMB News Nightcast. Ala Moana Center's anchor tenant joins the fight against mall management's expansion plans. Liberty House says, see you in court. I'm Jade Moon. The U.S. Justice Department has temporarily barred the state from moving patients into this brand new state hospital in Kaneohe. The reason? Concerns over patient safety. It's got all the right stuff and holds just enough. It's the top of the line. It's a Nissan. It's beautiful and it's mine. Well, it goes anywhere. Never can. Hi, 
The Murphys of Lake Edna watch what they spend. That's why they spend Tuesday night in front of the TV, enjoying a dinner from KFC. They always get great chicken and great fixings at a great price. It's the perfect dinner, once they get the remote from John Jr. What would you spend, Hawaii? This February, pick up 15 pieces of juicy chicken or 36 pieces of spicy hot wings for just $12.99. Then watch them disappear. A great deal in Lake Edna or your neck of the woods. 1992. Sound familiar? I'm not talking about the year. BJ's talking about the greatest Simmons betting offer ever. Buy a premium Simmons mattress at the guaranteed lowest daily price and you'll only pay $19.92 for the box spring. Buy the vintage beauty rest queen size at just $3.59 and get the box spring for $19.92. Save $2.19. In fact, you can save up to $600 guaranteed. These are the lowest prices in 20 years and the best savings ever. It's BJ's President's Betting Sale. Don't hesitate. Do it today. It's time to go to the hospital, honey. Hmm, her blood count is too low. Let's give her another unit of blood now. We'll continue chemotherapy for at least three more weeks. She'll need a lot more blood during the treatment. 200 blood donors are needed in Hawaii every day. You are needed now. Give blood. Mommy, am I going to get better? When state officials proudly showed off the new Hawaii State Hospital in Kaneohe back in December, they said patients would be moved in within a month. Instead, the brand new mental hospital sits empty because of apparent design flaws, flaws that the U.S. Justice Department say must be fixed before patients can be moved in. KGMB's Jade Moon looks at an opening date that gets pushed further and further back. The gloom hanging over the state hospital isn't entirely due to the weather. That's because the feds say no one goes in until the design flaws are worked out. The Justice Department is doing what it is their job to do, which is to anticipate the worst case scenario to ensure that people are being protected. Andrade and other staff say there are a lot of kinks, if you want to call them that. For example, exposed sprinkler heads and bars in the closets not good to have around suicide-prone patients, and mirrors made of glass instead of stainless steel. We're looking at any item that can cause a suicide risk, whether it's a breakable mirror or a place to leap off of in the high stairwells. One of which is kind of a bell tower which has a fairly steep drop. There's a balcony on which it is possible that someone could jump and or be pushed, uh, and there's no protection over that balcony to prevent that from happening. O'Donnell says the architects are to blame, but the state says the architects had a different patient in mind. Five years ago when we started this hospital, we didn't have as many seriously mentally ill people that were forensic patients that are people that are sentenced, sentenced by the courts to go into the hospital and who need special care, very serious suicidal types of people and others. There are other major problems. The nursing station, which is, which is in the corridor, is uh, recessed into the, in, in the hall. And so we need video cameras to make sure that any potential blind spot is covered. Cost of those cameras, about $12,000 per building. Andrade says the prediction is that patients will be moved in within another two or three months, although she's hoping the work will get done sooner than that. But first, generators will have to be covered, furniture made risk-free, and balconies blocked off, so patients and staff will be safe. Jade Moon, KGMB News, Nightcast. Cost of those renovations, about $350,000. Two rental unit high-rises planned by the state would never see the light of day under legislation moving through the House committee process. The buildings are to be built on the former campus of Kapi'olani Community College, which has moved to Fort Ruger. There are to be 28 stories each, one for moderate to low-income rentals, the other for University of Hawaii faculty housing. Representative David Hagino calls them the Twin Towers of Doom. The land used to be part of McKinley High School, and the state promised to give it back after the college moved, says Aguino. Not only that, but the administration last year slipped the money to design the project into the budget after it reached the Senate. So really there was never any hearing on this particular measure and it made it through the uh, budget conference intact and uh, after they, they got the money authorized, then they began to solicit some opinion. 
Hagino's bill, heard by his committee today, would force the state to return the land to McKinley High School. Not doing so, he says, would be an abuse of the whole concept of education reform. Meanwhile, a spokesperson in the governor's office cautiously responds that the project is affordable housing mandated by the legislature. Next month, five stores at the Ala Moana Center will close up, joining a growing list of small shops forced out by expansion plans and the eventual addition of a Neiman Marcus anchor store. Despite protests and customer petitions, mall directors said the small stores must go when their leases run out. Today, the smoldering controversy took an unexpected turn. Liberty House has filed suit against Daye Equitable Joint Venture, the owner of the center, over what it calls a lease violation. Liberty House contends the center will break a number of provisions in its 1963 lease agreement by adding Neiman Marcos, Marcus and Chan, changing the configuration of the mall. Owners of the small stores being moved aside for the expansion appear happy with the suit and say it's great to have someone else on their side. I feel that Liberty House is looking out for the best interest of the customers and the Ala Moana tenants because I think uh, if this was done properly, you know, with sensitivity and uh, caring, this would never have happened like this. Officials from both Liberty House and Al Moana Center declined to comment on this legal action. And we have more ahead for you on this edition of the KGMB News Nightcast. It's deja vu all over again for American speed skater Bonnie Blair. Ross Miharas gates in next with sports. This portion of the KGMB News is sponsored in part by your Toyota dealers of Hawaii. Introducing the all-new Camry. You'll love what it does for you. If an automobile is a reflection of who you are, then the beautiful new Toyota Camry will say a lot for you. The 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Come see the all-new Toyota Camry. Roomier, safer, quieter, and more powerful at your Toyota dealer now. The 1992 Health and Fitness Top 10 List. Number 10, Gymnastics Competition. 9, Karate Championships. 8, Healthy Cooking. 7, Leg Alert. 6, Acrobatics. 5, Diagnostic Tests. 4, The Crush and Bula Boys. 3, KSSK Fitness Fun Booth. 2, Recipe Contest. And number 1, Viva Health and Fitness Aerobic Championships. Not necessarily in that order. It's all healthy as Kaiser Permanente presents the Great Aloha Run Health and Fitness Expo. February 14th through 16th at Blaisdell. The Marsh Furniture Price Riot is in its final days. It's the sale that's bigger than our annual half-price event. The riot means the biggest selection of $3.99, $4.99, and $5.99 sofas in the state. It means store-wide furniture savings at Marsh. It means some items will be selling at or below cost. It means fabulous one-time savings and no payments for six months. The Price Riot at Marsh Furniture Mart. Just hurry, because it all ends with special hours, 9 to 9, Saturday. Don't miss it. Okay, we're at Pizza Hut, right? And he goes, give me a double cheeseburger, please. And I'm like, Kelly, this is a Pizza Hut, okay? I thought you were on it. But he got a double cheeseburger. Pizza at a radical price. All this ground beef and double cheese. It's back. A medium double cheeseburger pizza for just $11.99. Five bucks more for a second. Add bacon and onions for a buck. Pizza Hut. Make it great. Ross has just been kidding me because I misspoke when I meant to say Neiman Marcus and I said Neiman Marcos. They do have a shoe department in, in that store, don't they? I think so. I think the family has been there too. Okay, good. All right. Sorry. No miracle comebacks, no beginnings for the Bows tonight at Rainbow Stadium as 13th ranked Hawaii loses to 18th ranked California. Catch of the night made not by the Bows or the Bears, but by this fan in the upper deck who leans over the railing for the snag. You can bet his heart's pumping. Starting pitcher Billy Blanchett gets pumped by Cal's batting order. The Bears score right off the bat. Top of the first on Matt Luke's RBI. The Bows tie it in the bottom of the first inning, though, when birthday boy Harold Kebab launches a triple off the wall in center. Hawaii celebrating at one all. But with the score tied at two, the Bears go on to score three unanswered runs. The highlight coming when Reed Algen scores all the way from first on Luke's double down the line. 
the final tonight, 5-2. to two. California, the Bears draw first blood in the three-game series. Bows now with a 4-3 and three record. Game 2 tomorrow, LeVon Largusa starts. America's sweetheart at the Winter Games gave the U.S. a nice Valentine's Day present. Bonnie Blair wins her second gold medal, the first woman ever to win a pair of golds at Alberville. She does it in the 1,000-meter speed skating event, coming back nicely from a disappointing 21st place showing in the 1500 a couple days ago. Bonnie's time, 121.90, but she would have to wait until her closest competitor, China's Ye Xiaobo, had a chance. Xiaobo puts medal to the puddle but comes up two one-hundredths of a second short of Blair's time. So, Bonnie is the bell of the Blair Bunch with her second gold medal. I think one thing that was a little bit more special uh, this time as far as being in the thousand is my family was right in front of me on the medal stand and that made it a lot more special. That was really nice. Taking a look at the medal tote board, Germany continues to outpace the pack with five gold medals, six silver, and three bronze, 14 medals in all. Austria is second. The unified team, formerly the Soviet Union, is third. Host France is fourth. The United States has four medals in all, three gold, one bronze, good for seventh place in the standings. Bonnie Blair accounts for half the U.S. medals. Busters busted. Former heavyweight champ Buster Douglas charged with driving under the influence of alcohol in his hometown of Columbus, Ohio. Police pulled over the 31-year-old as he was allegedly driving 89 miles an hour in a 55 speed zone. Douglas didn't have a license and refused to take a breath test. Oddly, the arrest comes a day before he makes his acting debut on the TV show Street Justice. His role? A prisoner. Ouch. NBA. Nets bag the Sixers. Hawks 112. Magic 107. Indiana and Houston catch Friday Night Fever. Nuggets by 20. Clips surprise Phoenix. Bullets hold a forum in L.A. Blazers have a tough time winning in Sacto. And the Sonics 17 better than San Antonio. Chaminade's athletic department is now the English department. That's because Chuck, Ling Chuck English, currently the school's tennis coach, has been named the new Silver Sword athletic director. English met the press today, introduced by Chaminade Vice President James Martin. English has lived here the past nine years and is a former women's tennis coach at Pearl City High. Uh, a lot of the athletes aren't uh, a professional caliber of athlete, and it's important that when they come to school here that they walk away with something. The universities in invested money in individuals with their scholarships and so on and so forth, and the individual can walk away and build a career out of that education, and I think that's what we're looking at trying to do with all our student athletes. English replaces Mike Hogan, who resigned last November. The girls of summer are back. The 1992 Wahine softball team combines speed and power, a mix that first-year coach Bob Kulin hopes will overwhelm the opposition. The Wahines were on display for the media today. It's a team full of experienced leadership. Uh, right now, we're about too strong at all our positions. Uh, defensively, we're, we're strong all the way around. Um, we can put in a, a speed lineup. We can put in a power lineup. We can put in, depending upon the opponent we're playing, we can put whoever we want out there, and they're going to do the job. Doing the job will be difficult in the Big West. Four teams are ranked in the top 20, including second-ranked Fresno State. Well, I guess everyone just has to do their job. Speed has to get on. Power has to hit them in. Well, sounds pretty good. So if we just keep it all together and everybody just works together and everybody does their job, I don't think there should be a doubt in anybody's mind. The Wahines play their annual alumni game tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the UH softball field. So we started with hardball and we end with softball. Wow. Kind of a cycle there. I think there's a message there somewhere. <laughs> haven't found it yet, though. <laughs> Still ahead on this edition of the Nightcast, we'll have the weekend weather outlook, and you'll hear the third name today in Aloha Friday's $20 million giveaway. After I read her personal, I knew I had to meet her. Wholesome, natural blonde seeks honest relationship. Your neighborhood pay and save carries over 350 different shades of hair color. Who knows how many are right for you? I mean, this could finally be the real thing. With Pay and Save's Home Sale Value Book, Pert Plus Shampoo is just $2.99. A three-pack of Scotch videotape is just $7.99. And check our great selection of quality Decorel frames at Pay and Save. It's just what you want, just around the corner. It's been totally redesigned from the ground up. The 1992 Grand Am, now available at your Hawaii Pontiac dealers. It's more powerful with a new high-output engine. 
And it puts you, the driver, in more control than ever before with a standard anti-lock brake system. Then, top it off with a new dramatic exterior design. But that's not all. Right now, get $500 cash back or financing as low as 2.9%. The 92 Grand Am. Now with incredible incentives and a stylish, safer ride to excitement. Get it today from your Hawaii Pontiac dealers. Hello, Mike, it's me. Back in town and headed for the photo, yeah. Taco Bell. Honey, I got a craving. Why don't you meet me there? Taco Bell. That Taco Bell taste starts at 59 cents. That one and only taste. How long has it been? Got a craving, got to run for the photo, yeah. It's going to be an historical event. The President's Weekend Sale at BJ Furniture. It's a landslide winner, right, George? It's my birthday, but you get the savings. This sofa is specially priced at just $6.99. Save a bundle on this five-drawer chest, just $2.49. Or get a Pahu accent stool for just $59. Don't miss these revolutionary prices. Plus, you'll make no monthly and no interest payments for three full months. Get to the President's Weekend Sale. At BJ Furniture, now through Monday. Hurry in now for these presidential savings. Some of those high winds and heavy rains breezed through so quickly today, we were saved from the expected flooding. Forecasters say we'll have more showers overnight. The low will be in the mid-60s, and just in time for the weekend, the sun is expected back. Saturday will feature mostly sunny skies with a high near 80. Winds will be southwesterly at 10 to 20 miles per hour. We found another lost owner of an unclaimed bank account in our $20 million giveaway. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Right now, some names from the 5 o'clock newscast. Armand Harvey of Waimanalo, almost $5,000 in an unclaimed account. Do you know him? From the 6 o'clock news, John C. Oshiro is deceased and left $5,000 in a credit union account. Perhaps you know of a relative who could claim the money. And now we add Sabina Anchetta, last known address, 1437 Dement Street, almost $5,500 waiting to be collected with just a phone call to us. Here's our recording line number, 296 KGMB. Make sure you leave a daytime telephone number and we'll get back to you Monday morning. And now about one of our successes, Yoshinori Hayashida was on yesterday's list and he used to live on Ka'au Street. Well, it seems like some collection agency collected $1,300 for him many years ago. He moved and he didn't know where the, the money was in that account. We may have some unexpected money for you, too, so watch our $20 million giveaway on all KGMB newscasts this weekend, too. And, Ross, I think it's very appropriate that you are wearing your love tie with the lips and the hearts on this Valentine's Day. Well, you know, I figured it was the only day of the year I could wear it without getting any hassles about it. Uh, you were wrong, though, because we've been <laughs> hassling you most of the day. Yep. <laughs> Plenty of good-natured teasing. But does that mean you'll put it away till next Valentine's Day? Well, I know. I kind of love the uh, love tie, but... Uh, We'll see. Um, think about it for uh, next couple of days, maybe. And speaking of the next couple of days, we're going to see two new people at this anchor desk tomorrow. That's right. Janet Wu and Scott Culbertson will be here Saturday and Sunday. Please join them, and we hope you have a lovely weekend. All right. Good night. GTE Mobile Net users on Oahu can call our newsroom without charge by dialing star KGMB. Closed captioning of the KGMB News is sponsored by GTE Hawaiian Tell. Beyond the call. Pat O'Brien takes you around the Winter Olympic Games next on KGMB. The time. Now